if a right triangle with a hypotenuse of length 8 is classified as isosceles, what is the length of one of its sides? All right, guys, so we have to be very careful here because we need to use the information that's given to get to a right answer here. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. If a right triangle, let me just go ahead and change colors. Let's use, a, let's use a highlighter actually. So a right triangle, hypotenuse of length eight, this triangle is also isosceles. We want to know length of one of its sides. So length of another side, basically. So let's go ahead and draw this thing out. Um, first of all, right triangle. I'll go ahead and draw a right triangle. And first off, I'll draw it like not to scale. Because hopefully, if you know what isosceles means, you'll know that this triangle that I'm drawing right now is kind of not the right size. Because here we have a right triangle. Hypotenuse of length 8. Hypotenuse is the side across from the right angle. But look, when you look at this, it says classified as isosceles. Isosceles means that two sides are congruent. If we have the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle. What that means is that the other sides can't be 8. They're smaller than 8. So we can't say that it's going to be, you know, this side congruent to this side. No, because that's the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side. So essentially what we're saying here is that these two sides are congruent. And so I know when you look at this, you're like, wait, this triangle doesn't look like it's the right size. Again, I know it's not drawn to scale. I'm going to go ahead and change the way it looks so that we can better see it. But when you're drawing things out, don't assume that it's going to be the exact way that it should look. Because I don't want you guys to get into the idea of having to draw perfect figures before you can do problems. But for the sake of this problem, for the sake of showing you, I'll go ahead and make this triangle smaller. Hopefully I can kind of, uh, nope, don't work. No worries. I can go ahead and just draw a brand new triangle, a right triangle, and make it look isosceles. So something along the lines of this. And so again, we're saying that this side and this side are the same, and my hypotenuse is 8. So basically, I'm looking for one of the sides. And if they're the same size, if they're the congruent right here and here, well, I can just name them something. You know, I'll pick a letter. Um, I'll just use A. I like avoiding using the letter X. If you want to use X, go ahead. I just like adding personality to the problem. The reason, again, that I'm using A for both is because A and A, they're congruent. Isosceles, isosceles means that two sides are the same. So A and A is proper here. Since they're the same, I can use the same letter. So now that we're here, well, what do we do? Well, again, guys, our goal here is to figure out the value of A because that's one of the sides. Since we have a right triangle, whenever you're thinking of right triangles and whenever you're thinking about computing for one of the sides, always think Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Remember, this is different. Don't let this A think of it as a different A. It is not the same A. This is just the formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That means that the two shorter sides squared together equals the longer side squared. So we'll have a squared, because that's the one of them, plus b squared, which is this one right here. So again, a squared equals c squared. Hopefully we got that. Hopefully that didn't confuse anybody. And if it did, hey, leave your comment in the comment section below, and I'll go ahead and make sure to refilm this. If it confuses even one person, I'm okay with refilming it. So here we are. a squared plus a squared, those are like terms. That will be 2 a squared equals c squared, and c is 8. Remember, guys, we're trying to solve for a. We're trying to solve for one of the sides. We're trying to solve for one of the sides. So I'll divide both sides by 2 only after I figure out what 8 squared is. That will be 64. I keep writing 8. That's going to be 64. We'll divide both sides by 2 to get the a squared by itself. Then we'll go ahead and take the square root of both sides to get a equals square root of 32. So do we have square root of 32 explicitly listed there? Uh-oh, spaghetti-o, no. So it looks like at this point what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go ahead and simplify this bad boy. So let me go ahead and move this up a little bit. Um, and actually, let me move this out of the way by making it smaller. Great. And I'll move this up here. So let's go ahead and simplify. 32 
is there a perfect square that can multiply to 32? This is how we're going to simplify it. And remember, 32 is 16 times 2. 16 is a perfect square, okay? 16 is a perfect square. So because of that, 16 can leave the square root symbol after we take its square root. The square root of 16 is 4. So that would be a equals 4, and we still have the square root of 2 right there. And so our answer here is 4 square root 2. Boom, all good. And if you would like additional help in terms of how to do this, how to simplify at the end, hey, go ahead and join us in our practice course. We will be more than happy to show you exactly how you can simplify these types of equations, expressions. That way, you don't have to stress about it on the test. So keep up the great work, guys. Let us know what else we can do to make your life easier.